All right, everyone, welcome back to the shop. It's Sunday morning, uh, November 12th. It's late in the morning. Uh, I was upstairs editing uh, another video for next Friday. Um, and I decided to take this off. That's my little, uh, whatever you want to call it, for outdoors. It just it keeps the wind noise out uh, when I was outdoors. Um, but when I was editing the video, this kept popping out on the side. So I decided to... Uh, um, just to take it off because it's not it's not needed inside so anyway um, and the reason it was pushed over is because I had to on my little tripod mount I've got my LED light fixture over on this side and then I've got the little uh, the shotgun mic down here in the middle and the camera right over here on this side so um, when I was outside I didn't have the light on it so I was able to move that over but indoors I had to put it in the middle so anyway so, uh, you'll, you'll notice that in that last little clip uh, I had on there, um, it was, uh, I, I set up to record myself covering the horizontal stabilizer. Unfortunately, I didn't hit the record button, so the whole, uh, uh, that whole footage never, it doesn't exist. So, anyway, um, it, it was easy to do. Um, it's no different than doing anything else here. Uh, it probably took me do each side I don't know maybe maybe an hour and a half for both sides so it, it was easy so anyway what we're gonna work on today let me pick the whole assembly up and bring it over here what we're gonna work on today is the vertical stabilizer and the problem I had with the vertical stabilizer is I wasn't happy with the base on it I wasn't happy the way the angles were on this um, so as you can see, now that I've got this all together, this elevator's stuck on. There's nothing I can. If I need to get that off for any reason whatsoever, now I've got to cut this all apart. So that's that's why I made sure that everything was done. I've got all my little repairs done, um, and I'm I'm pretty happy with it. There's a couple little places. Well, there is just something now locked into time because there's nothing I can do about it. Over here, there was a little teeny bump. Um, and you can't feel it going this way. But what happened was a little bit of that uh, polytac. Uh, when I put it on there, it sagged down a little bit and pulled this down a little bit here and a little bit over here. So it's not going to affect the plane. Um, and once I get the uh, once I get the paint on it, you should see less of the uh, of what happened here. If not, even on real airplanes, when they uh, when they when they put the fabric on it uh, as well, you, you can see weld seams and everything else. So it's uh, something you don't want to have happen, but it does happen. All right, here is. What I had to work with on this is that I had to bring this, let's see if I get a finger, I had to bring this farther out on the top so that I can get a good angle coming up. So this was a strip of balsa that went out to about here and you can see it and then it fades into nothing down here and then I had to sand some more of this off. Same thing on this side, it's just a small piece up on the top that goes up and then here it fades down. But at least now I've got an angle. It's a good thing I was feeling that. I got to do a little bit of sanding right there. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy with the angle on this now. So this is ready to cover. I'm still trying to decide what I want to do up front. How I want to bring this down. Because um, what I'm going to do, let's see if I can kind of sort of show you. All right, this is an over exaggeration of what it's going to be, but because it's not going to come this far out, it's going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, and uh, with some with some nitrate dope, I'm going to I'm going to dope a little strip down the middle, and then I'm going to cut right on that strip, so that way I don't have the ends fraying out, because what that'll do is that little piece will come down here, and I'll just put it up on the bottom of this because this wraps up on the side a little bit, so that'll just come straight down here, and then I may end up doing the same thing with a thin little strip and uh, just put some dope on it 
cutting it out straight and then just come in and have like a little L-shaped piece that comes down here just to seal that seam. That's what they do in real life. That's probably what's going to happen on this one. But anyway, I'm trying to figure out how I want to bring it up here. So let me get this set back up in the stand real quick because this is this is the this is the part of this covering job. I'll figure this camera thing out one of these days. This is the part of the covering job that I've spent the most time sitting around trying to figure out how I want to do it because this is gonna be, this is this is the hardest covering part on this whole plane is this right here on how I want that to look. So the rest of the plane didn't take that much time to figure out how you want to do it. So anyway, when this comes in, this will come in and be set down like this. Now, when it comes time to wrap over the front up here, if I have this glued down on this edge, I've got to try to figure out how to make this curve. I think it'll work out okay. Have it go a little past half, cut a seam up and then do the same thing on the other side and very carefully trim that out over here. Because the other option would be is if I came up here like this, I can just round it off this way. And then when I come across with the top, I can just do the same thing and just come across that edge and, and just flat out and then have it drop down underneath. So, oh, I'm gonna tip the camera over. That's the, uh, oh, my LED light died. That's the, uh, that's the issue I'm having with this one. And you only get one chance to do it right because once I put that glue down on there, I, I can't, it's, it's there. And unless I want to come in with some MEK to try to clean it up, you know, I, I'm sure I could, but I don't want to do that. So anyway, let me get a new uh, LED light camera battery on there. And then, uh, I'm going to sit and think about this for a second, and then as soon as I get rolling, um, I'll make a video. I forgot all about you guys. I started covering. I started covering. I forgot about you. Let me get it set up, and we'll see how well we can dance together, because once I start coming in here, I don't know how much I might be blocking. Um, it's all coming down to this piece here. And I got to figure out how I want to address this one. This is where it's going to get really funky right down in here. So I got to make the call real quick on this one, but let's get rolling. Attempt number one, failure. I'm still trying to figure that out because that is just such a weird compound curve and I can't pull on that curve the way I want to pull on it. Because normally like when you saw me do the wing tips, you had to round it in last. So once you had everything else straight, you were able to work the, work the weave. Um, I can't do it. I can't do it up there. 
I gotta figure out how I want to do this one. So first attempt, not good. And hopefully I won't have to do too much cleanup to start attempt number two. That's why I thinned out I thinned out the uh, the MEK so it wasn't so thick and gloppy. So um, and with the thinner in it, it's gonna take a little bit longer time for it to, to set up. Um, so that's why it was, believe it or not, it was actually it was easier, it was easier to pull off than, than it would have been before and it hadn't set up all the way. So it's just unfortunate that that's a, that's a good piece of, uh, good piece of covering that's, that's gone, that's done, so. All right, um, I don't know, let me sit down and think about this one. I'm going to think about this one and then I'll, I'll bring, I'll bring you back when kind of have an idea how I want to do it. I'm, so I'm going to use that as a scrap piece right now um, just to see how I might be able to get that if I start if I start here and run up the face of this if I'll be able to wrap it around here this might just have to be instead of doing it the way I want to do it see it'd be nice to be able to come in off of here first then come up and try to wrap it down, but I'm still working with this curve. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go upstairs. Um, on the, I got the laptop down here, but I'm gonna go upstairs on the, on the quicker computer, um, and see how they, see how they did it. I've got a couple blogs on how they, they covered the real one. Um, I want to see how they did that tail section, because this is not supposed to be this is not part of the real plane this is just balsa um, as I've got my other Piper Cub set up the way that this was set up but with the Cub it had a center rib running down the top of the fuselage so that was so you did this half of the fuselage up over the top then you did the other half and you had to fight it in the middle but you were able to get it so um, I don't know. I'm going to go upstairs look. I'll be right back. Alright. I think I got it pretty much figured out here. Let's see how well this picture will show up through that video. I'll, I'll, I'll include this in the video. Alright. What they ended up doing was, just to kind of show you here real quick. For theirs, this comes in from here and goes up over the front to this port part here. On the real plane, this is actually up a little bit farther forward, um, and there's nothing I can do about that. And it's just the way that this arf or this this kit was designed. This kit, yeah, I suppose a kit. Anyway, regardless, even the set of planes was designed that this was a little farther forward up here. But anyway, what they did is this came across. I'm hoping you're close enough. This came across like this from point to point on the uh, from where the from where the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer uh, slid in. So this came across like this, and then the rest of it came up, and then they s stitched this into place. So this was stitched into that. So that's where the dividing line was on the real one. And as soon as I get this ready to go. Let's see if you can see it. You can see, you can see that little teeny seam right there. So that's how theirs was originally set up on the plane. So and you can see that the leading edge of the, the uh, vertical stabilizer was a little bit farther forward than this one is compared to where the, uh, to where the uh, horizontal stabilizer goes. Now, like I said, this is different from a real one. This is an RC plane. And what they do is for stability, they usually increase the size of the tail, uh, especially the horizontal stabilizer, uh, about 10 to 15% from what the original one is. And all that does is because you're not in the plane, you're flying it from the ground, it's much harder to fly an aircraft from the ground than it is from flying inside of it because you don't know what the plane's doing. When you're up in a plane, pilots say you fly with your butt. That way you know what the plane's doing uh, just from the way you feel in the seat of the plane. Um, this you don't. You're standing on the ground so your gravity is, unless you're jumping up and down, it stays the same. 
So I mean the gravity, but your your acceleration on the ground. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I was able to the piece that I had already cut, and uh, it's kind of straight. Um, the piece I had already cut and it had to tear off. I'm going to use this piece again. Um, so this will, because luckily it was a big enough oversized piece. So I'm going to set this up on the top. I'm going to come on in. I am going to glue this back in just the way it was. And I'm going to leave this out. And then what I'm going to do is before I attach that, I'm going to come across here with a razor knife and cut this and glue this in before I pull it up over the top. So I'm going to kind of tack it in in the back side over here. Then I'll come up, and I don't know how well you can see this, it's going to make the curve, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it from all the way up here or if I'm going to have to bring it back a little bit farther. Um, either way, that, uh, that, that will be my call as the time comes because if there is a little bit of excess material here, it can get pulled up when I shrink it. Hopefully. That's, that's kind of where I'm at. So I want to have as, as little as little loose material in this spot uh, as I possibly can. So let me go ahead, I'll move you back in a little bit closer um, just so you can kind of see and uh, let's try it again. All right, see? Internet's awesome, man. You always got to go check out and see what somebody else did. If you can if you can find any kind of any kind of documentation when you're when you're rebuilding a plane, uh, you can find wonderful bits of info on the internet and 
do was those pictures. See, that's the one part of, that I had never didn't pay attention to yet on uh, through the uh, through the guy's blog because I hadn't gotten to this yet. And I should had I checked out ahead of time, I would have known what I was going to have to do. So unfortunately, I was trying to clean that up by having that so there wouldn't be a seam here. But there's going to be a seam, just like in real life. There's going to be a real seam here. So I've got the half. I got half of it done, and you can see it's just very. It's it's a, it's loose, but very very little. That's no big deal at all. So I'm not going to go ahead and tighten this side up. I'm going to spin the whole plane around, and it's going to be kind of a really strange situation. I'm trying to work on it the other way. I might have to. I'll probably just have to move the camera around and everything and swing this end out that way uh, so I can get to it. But I don't want to tighten this side up until I get the other side covered because if I tighten this side up right now, it's going to want to pull everything that way and I don't want that to happen. So I will go on upstairs, grab a little bit of food while this is while this is setting up, it's it's pretty dry right now, um, but I wanted to I wanted to set up a little bit more, so I'll go upstairs, uh, grab a little bit of lunch, and uh, come on back down, and uh, let's get the other side done, and man, then it's just uh, I just gotta clean up a little bit up on the top uh, between the you'll see it when the time comes. Um, so what I, if I can at least get this done today? Because I know I keep saying I'm going to get, I'm going to get it finished. I'll get it covered on a Sunday. It's going to be a Sunday. I just don't know which Sunday. All right, we're back on this side of the building. Sorry about the look on my face because that's going to hit. All right, we got light. I, what I ended up doing? Let me tone that down a little bit. What I ended up doing? Here's bright man. That'll just cut your eyeballs in half. That's a little better. Just while I'm chatting to you. All right, um, yeah, I had to wait till the uh, LED light battery changed. It just takes for hours. It took like four hours. So I went upstairs and uh, made some lunch, took a nap. I didn't really try to take a nap. I just fell asleep. Anyway, let me get everything redirected back towards the plane. And then we're going to see how nicely this is going to, I don't know how well this is going to work with me getting in your way, but it's what we got. All right, let me... Juice up the brightness here a little bit, and uh, let's get rolling.
All right. Consider that done. All I got to do is just come on in, shrink it, dope it. And we'll do a little bit of a sand and then dope it several more times because it's what we do. But I want to make sure because see now this is the way it's supposed to look because it's only touching down here. It's not touching up here. So I got to watch and see how much nitrate dope I put on because I don't want to broadcast where it's pulling it in on the side. So it needs to just be down here. So I got to really watch myself. That's what I had to do with the cub when I saw I'm ducking down to get underneath it. So anyway, that's what I had to do when I was working with the cub. So it is, it is actually covered. These will get cut apart after I get the dope on it. I'll cut that later on. Um, yeah. So, so far so good. Like I said, we'll get the little wrinklies out. I got the, I got the iron warming up right now. All right, let me give you a quick little heads up before I flip her upside down and start uh, working on the other side. There is a little bit of wrinkle right here. I'm gonna leave that. I want this to all set up. I want the glue, the glue, the adhesive, the polytech to set up completely overnight. And then uh, tomorrow or sometime during the week, I'll come back and uh, do the final tightening on it. But it's looking, it's looking really good. I'm, just gonna, I'm trying to scrape some little excess polytech off with my fingernail right now. Because as soon as it gets a little bit harder, it's it still sands. It's just it's easy to remove any bigger pieces while it's still a little on the let's just call it the gooey side. So anyway, this this is is I, I got I've got to sand it, but that I'm not worried about today. Um, so I'm I'm actually really happy with it. It looks good. When you look down, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, it does not touch this piece this uh what do you want to call it the the cross the cross brace uh for the vertical stabilizer it doesn't touch it until it gets back to here and that's the way it's supposed to be so this up here it doesn't even touch it it's probably you know three eighths of an inch away from it up here and then it tapers back in and touches back here so that's that's the way it's supposed to be so makes me real happy so one of the things that I thought was going to be a lot harder um, and at least you're a witness to the first part that the way that I thought the way that I wanted to do it ended up not being the right way that's why I wear this shirt intelligence is the ability to adapt to change so I had to wear it because of what I'm working on here I decided with that I'm probably gonna to have to change the way I wanted to do it and I did